Hey guys, Jeff Ryan here, having a blast this morning playing with the slot cars. I mean, just one after another. I keep putting them on the track. If they need oil or if they need the tires, you know, I've just been having a blast. Just been having a blast with them. Now today, I know I mentioned in the last video, we're going to be putting together uh, another one of these trailers. I get it from the uh, Print Pro guys. I got the instructions all printed out and everything. So we're going to uh, put this together. I know I did a video on putting one of these together before. I did a red one. It came out really good. I was super impressed with how easy it was to put together and uh, the quality of the, the product, the parts. They're, these guys are really doing a good job. This time, I want to put this uh, light blue one together, but I've got some uh, Molotow uh, chrome pens that I got from the Hobby Lobby. Yesterday, I got a four millimeter and a two millimeter. I've got a one millimeter over here plus the uh, refill, but I wanted to see if the two or the four might fit the ridges better on these trailers because these trailers have like, uh, like you can see in the windows there, they're raised up a little bit, you know, especially that back one where my pinky is. You can just put the marker on there and go around, be careful, and then it should make like a good little oval around there for us. So we're gonna get into that. First thing you gotta do is um, get that out of the package. I've already gathered some parts here. I knew last time I knew I was gonna need an axle, uh, definitely a guide pin, couple of hubs, couple of wheels. So let me go ahead and get this out of the package, guys. This is gonna be a blast. And just real quick again with the Print Pro guys, I, I have been having a blast with the uh, trailer there. I've been having an absolute wonderful time with that trailer. I'm trying to figure out what car doesn't look good on there, you know? If you have an opportunity to get one of these trailers from the Print Pro guys, get it. They're, they're totally fun. Yeah, I got a set of the instructions, but I also got a, a picture of the uh, parts list here. And I'm just making sure that I've got everything over there and it looks like I do counting the screws and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, time to get started, guys. Uh, and one, one, one quick thing, I, I know I said this last time when I was uh, doing the Print Pro guys, but they're, they're smart. They give you the um, uh, quick response codes, plus they tell you, hey, listen, on Facebook, you want to find this? You know, they, they, do, they take care, they make sure that if you want to find them, you can find them, guys. All right, very good, let's get rolling. The first step, sand down the uh, little tab there. I've got my rat tail file out and it's really smooth right now. I think the reason they want us to sand it down is so the um, when you glue it, it grips a little bit better. Okay, good, it only took a little bit to get that sanded. The uh, number two here, it says, put the screws in the bottom of the, I guess that's a longer piece and this is the tail piece. So let me go get the screws in. What I'm just noticing there, see some of the flash on there? I'm gonna sand that off. I'm gonna sand that off, only take a second. Just got the lip sanded down. I know I'm supposed to be putting the screws in the bottom here. But you see those two holes there in the uh, back, back part of the uh, camper? I gotta clean those out. Uh, I got a small screwdriver, or screwdriver, I got a small uh, drill over there. I'm gonna do it by hand. I just got the front part of the camper in and I just wanted to say, hey, listen, the Print Pro guys, they, they got the holes lined up exactly right. They just fit so perfect. They're really good. All right, very good. Step two is done. I got the screws in place. Next, it's saying, hey, listen, you got to glue the uh, back part here with the front part. So let me go ahead and get the uh, Gorilla Glue. Just a sec. All right, very good. I just got the uh, top seam there glued. I'm going to set it aside and just let it dry for a bit. Let's go ahead and take a look at what the next part is. Yeah, we got to do some sanding of uh, the, the, the body, the other side of the body to where we're going to glue it. So I don't want to fuss with that for a bit. I'm just going to let it dry. Coming back out into the uh, garage. I know it's been uh, plenty of time. That should be all set. Yeah, yeah, that feels good. That feels real good. That's sturdy. Very good. That looks great. Looks great so far. So what do we have to do? It says we need to sand all the areas just to roughen them up a little bit to where we can glue the side panels on. I've got a uh, emery board. I have also have um, the rat tail file. So it should be um, just straightforward. Just sand the areas that are going to need to be glued. Okay, I was just getting after it with the uh, emery board here. I just file it down, file it down, and it's super simple, really good. It's sturdy when it's all together like that. And I think the next part is, is they say, hey, get it ready for gluing, then put the side panels on. Uh, just for fun, I want to check to see how well the side panels fit. What do we got the front? No, it's that. 
Listen, I, I always like to dry fit stuff, you know what, before you glue it, just to see how it is. Wow, nice, nice. Now here, here's one thing I want to point out. Look at that. The front or the, the back part of the hitch here stops or prevents this from sliding forward. So it's like made to where as soon as you fit it up here, you know it's in the, the exact right spot. That's pretty cool. That's really neat. Just dry fit the uh, other side there. Everything fits just absolutely wonderful. Time to glue it up. I'm gonna use the Gorilla Glue, and I will definitely be sparing. I don't wanna use a bunch of it, just maybe a couple drops uh, in uh, like four locations on each panel. Got both sides glued on. I was just putting a little pressure on it. I'm gonna do it for about another minute, then I'll go ahead and let it, uh, let it off. But um, I got both sides on there, and it is looking good. Okay, good, both sides are on. I'm just gonna not fuss with it for a little bit. Uh, one thing that we do have to do is the back of the hubs, uh, I, I'm skipping ahead here, but you have to sand them down a little bit in order for them to work properly. So let me get my uh, drum out. I know it's over here. Uh, there's my drum. Oh, and one thing guys, one thing, and uh, some of you might appreciate it, but I used to have a ton of wires down here from the transformers and everything. I've got, um, I've got a, the, the plug there and it's a whole lot easier walking around rather than having wires wrapped around the legs and all that stuff. So I did make an improvement there and I really like it, I really like it. To turn everything on and off, I got one switch under here now rather than you know turning click, 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 you know, lights and everything. So it's a whole lot better. I just grabbed down uh, one of the hubs with that barrel sander and I wanted to see how much um, I ground down. Go ahead and check it. This, this this is one that hasn't been touched yet. And what do we go? 1.1 millimeters. Okay. And this is the one I did grind down. Uh, what I got? 0 0.8 millimeters. So I didn't quite cut it in half, but I did ground some down. I'm going to do the same or similar amount. To, uh, this one here and that should do it if not we'll have to redo it a little bit but that I ground it down quite a bit just got uh, done sanding and I, I checked it a bit ago and it was just a little too big this is the, the, the second hub here and what I got oh wait that's exactly what the other one is so good if we have to do it more fine but at least we have a starting point and say hey, we thinned them out quite a bit all right, I know we kind of jumped ahead, um, saying in the back uh, part of the hubs there, but if you got time to let the glue dry, just do, find, find time to do something, right? So what is it saying for the next step? Okay, good, yeah, we have to detach the uh, bottom here uh, from the, the top of the trailer. And that's where the screws come in, guys. That's where the screws come in. And let me um, just kind of think out loud a little bit. I had a consideration in the first video that I did when I was building the red one, I said, hey, listen, I think that these guys should uh, like offer like a little piece of clear plastic to make glass, you know, to make glass, to make glass, you know, there. That was a, a, a one consideration I had. But another was is since it's easy to get into this, all you got to do is unscrew it. You could put a uh, like a lighting kit in here. And quite frankly, I think I'm going to do another one of these trailers and try to put a lighting kit in there that uh, you can probably turn off and on, you know, um, maybe from the bottom or something like that. But I think that'd be a blast. Imagine that going around the track, with, you know, all lit up and everything. I think it's going to be a, a fun project. Another consideration. Um, wow. What if, what if you had like a diorama in there? You know, like tables, chairs, something like that. That would be ultra cool. Guys, if you get a camper and you dress it up or you get a lighting kit or you do something with it, send me some pictures. I always love to see what you guys are doing. And this is a neat little kit. Again, you can get into it just by unscrewing the bottom there. These guys at Print Pro, they really, really, really thought it out. Now they're not glued in. The axle carriers, I just dry fit them. They fit again, absolutely perfect. Spot on guys. Got the axle holders um, glued in place. It's still drying a little bit. Now, I, I'm gonna say this, the uh, bumper there, the front part of the trailer hitch there, and the trailer hitch itself, if you wanted to paint those up, now would be a good time to do it. You know what I mean? Now would be a good time to do it. I like the gray. I do, I like the gray, I truly like the gray. I'm just thinking, yeah, if somebody wanted to do it before you tried to 
glue the bumper onto the back there in the trailer, it, it, stop. Just go ahead and paint it. Go ahead and paint it ahead of time. All right, I'm gonna leave that a little bit more to dry. Then what is the next thing? We got that done. Okay, then we will, uh, yeah, we're gonna drill out the holes here. So give me just a bit. Okay, good. That, that has been drying for a little bit there, so I know that they're in place real good. That would be fantastic. The uh, next step we said is to drill the uh, holes out there. Now they do have some pilot holes there, but they're tiny. The axle here is not going to fit through it in a way you do have to drill it out. And what did we say they are like 1.4, 1.5? Yeah, 1.5 is what they are as far as millimeters. So what I'm going to do is that if you have a drill, yeah, that, that, that's fine, but I want something just a little bit bigger. I don't know if this is the right one. I'm going to check it. I think it is from last time. And what do we have on this bugger? We got a 1.7. So that's slightly, 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 slightly bigger. I'm going to use that to uh, drill out the holes. And while I got it in front of me, I'm going to go ahead and do it now. Again, there it is. They got a little pilot hole for us. They got a little tiny little pilot hole for us. And there we go. I'm all the way through that first one there. Let me go ahead and back it out. And then the same thing with the other side. Again, that pilot hole tells you exactly where you want it. You know what? It tells you exactly where you want it. Good, let me back that out. All right, let me go ahead and clean that up a little bit. When I was talking about cleaning it up a little bit, there was a little bit of um, residual um, plastic there from when I drilled the hole. So I just took the emery board and sanded it down so it's nice and smooth where the uh, inside of the hubler is, is gonna go there. We have got it drilled out there. Next thing, and we already got ahead of this, is uh, it says sand the back of the, uh, wh whatever kind of hubs you got, you're gonna have to thin them out a little bit. Let's go ahead and do this. I'm gonna put the axle in, put the hubs on, tires on, and we're gonna see if it fits up underneath that uh, body there. All right, here's where I'm at. I'm not gonna go any further right now. I put the uh, hub on the axle just a little bit, but you see how the top of the ac or top of the hub is higher than the uh, body of the chassis. There, you, you got to do. You, I got to sand some more, so I'm going to sand both the hubs down a little bit more before I go any further. Just got done sanding down a little bit, and I got an um, 0.5 on both of them. So I'm gonna try that out and see if that works over here um, in the assembly. Okay, I got the hubs installed. Now here's uh, what I want. I got the vise here. And if if you can easily turn that axle with the hubs on, you're in business. Now I'm gonna oil where that axle is and it'll turn, you know, a little bit more freely. Got the uh, back axle oiled up. Looks good, doesn't it guys? Looks good, looks good. Okay, time to put the body on the chassis here. Got the screws ready, let me go and get it assembled. I turned it over just a second, I uh, just want to make it a point before I put the screws in. I, I, I just make sure everything turns real easy, real free, before you put the screws in. Okay, got the camper body on the chassis there, got it all screwed up. The, that kind of sounded funny, didn't it? Uh, the bumper there, you see the tabs, the little indentations? They fit in the bottom part of the chassis. That's where I put the glue. I'm going to put the glue right there in those two little tabs and set it in. Now, you see the rectangle there with the hole in it? That's for the guide pin. You really want to use a guide pin with that, and they give you a, um, a uh, an extra screw in case you want to do that. So we're definitely going to install the guide pin. I found out last time that's the way to go. All right, let me go ahead and get that bumper on. All right, we are getting close. Got the back bumper on, the uh, uh, trailer hitch. They give you a long screw to, uh, to use on the trailer hitch, but I'm going to use the uh, screw from the back screw post of whatever car I choose here. I'm gonna use this uh, longer screw, <coughs> pardon me, for the underneath side of there to put the guide pin in. That's where I'm gonna use that one. So what car would look good at that trailer? I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, yeah, why not the uh, Cobra? I like the Cobra. <clears throat> Interesting. Um, see where the guide pin is on this one? It's in the front. But you can tell that this is uh, earlier body style than the um, later production. The later productions, they move the uh, screw post back. And um, you can always tell that because you'll see where the original screw post was. And then you can always see where the screw post is. 
So this is an earlier uh, AC Cobra. I think that's gonna look good pulling that trailer. Let me go ahead and get the uh, trailer hitch hooked up. Got the trailer hitch on. And you know what's interesting about it? It's uh, you know, just going around the track. You're looking at the Cobra, going to the Cobra. And if you're not paying attention, I don't want to say the trailer hitch is invisible, but it's you're, you're not focused on it. You know what I mean? So you can run the car. Yes, it's back there, but you're not you not saying, "Oh my God, there's a trailer hitch back there." If you want to make it invisible, paint it black. You know what I mean? If you want to do something like that. But I like the gray. Again, I like the gray. All right, Cobra's looking good. Uh, let me go ahead and get the guide pin installed in the bottom of there. And I think it was smart for those guys to do that because you want to keep this trailer on the. Um, right where it needs to be. The last thing you want is for like the uh, bumper to catch a guardrail or something like that. So point being is, if you got that guide pin in there, it's gonna keep it right where it needs to be. What do you think? Time to just to test the trailer just for fun, you know what? Might as well, before we paint it, let's make sure it looks good running around the track. There we go. Okay, very good. Get the right controller. Oh, looks good. Looks good. You see how they, even around the turns there, that, that guide pin in the back, you want that there, guys. You really want that there. Now, uh, I had said this in an earlier video. I said it'd be funny if guys tried to uh, race, race with uh, trailers. And I found videos of guys, I think it was, it may have been 132nd scale, I might be wrong in there, but uh, they were racing uh, like a four lane with trailers and it was absolutely hysterical because they're running one of them was flying off swerving and everything i don't think they had back guide pens it was absolutely hilarious okay good we've got it right where we want it and um the shade that the guy pin back there it's just like that that screw that they give you it's perfect for it okay now just for fun uh, i got a good idea about how i want to paint it what i want to do but let's go ahead and go online and see what they've done Okay, uh, let's see what we got here. This is one of the green ones, and I love that color green as well. Looking at the um, first picture here, it looks like they did around the door, they did around the windows, but the, the, the door, it seems like it has like a black ring around it, which is interesting because the uh, window in the back is silver, all the other trim is silver, and on this side looks really good. They got some um, red lights, and it looks like the lights are got some silver around them, so that's really cool. Let's see what else. And it looks really good. There it is, an exploded view of it. And yeah, okay, that's got it all painted up and everything. Let me do this. I'm going to uh, print out a copy of that and use that as a reference for when I go back into the garage. Okay, I got the, uh, the reference I just printed out there. So now I can see, hey, listen, here's what they did. It'll give me a little bit of a guide to where I'm going go ahead and um, you know, I start painting that up. And it looks like they're raised up, the ridges there are raised up good enough to where we put these uh, pens on. It should stay on there as long as you got a steady hand. So, uh, where are they at? Here they are right in front of me. I'm going to shake these up some more than we're going to get them off the cards. All right, I've got these shaken up real good. This is the four millimeter, and I haven't pumped it to where there's any paint at the tip of it yet. But the, the whole idea is, after you get this primed, is when you do it, just stay on the line and go slow. Now, the reason I got the two and the four is I wanted to compare, like, is it gonna be easier for me to do this with the two or the four, and I don't know yet, I don't know yet. Now, what's interesting is they're both uh, rounded tips, rounded tips. I've got some tester paint like this, and they're uh, flat tips like magic markers. Now, see, this two millimeter, Boy, I don't know if that's going to be any easier or harder than the four putting that on there. I might try a little bit with the four, might try a little bit with the two to see what it comes out. Now the lights, I know the bottom one here is going to be red. This is going to be like silver with a red dot in the middle. And what do we got? We got uh, probably silver all the way around and the red dot in the middle will do that. And again, silver, silver, and probably silver red dot in the middle for that, that top one there. Okay, let me get after this. I know I'm gonna have to hold it from me, but I got the tip prime there. I just kept uh, hitting it, you know, or pumping it rather, down, and I, I got it to where it's not flooded, but it is coated real good. Once again, I'm gonna have to hold the uh, trailer in front of me to get this paint on. 
here's a technique I've been using. I took the four out and I just, I always go in one direction. I pull it towards me, pull it towards me, turn it, pull it towards me. And I'm gonna follow suit with the door here. Okay, just got it done. I gotta set it down, let it dry right now. Uh, super simple with the uh, four millimeter Molotow here. Absolutely super simple. The, the ridges are raised up enough to where they're very, very easy to get. All right, guys, let me let that dry. In between takes, guys, I usually are having fun with these slot cars, and the reason I got the uh, Dragula out is I had a, a recent question. He said, hey, you know, listen, I love your videos, but where did I get the uh, Dragula? I made it. <laughs> I made everything underneath there. I'll tell you how. The Johnny Lightning came out with them, I think, in like 98. I might be wrong. It might be 97. But I think they had um, 98. I'm pretty sure they had them come out. I saw it, and I thought, hey, listen. A slimline chassis would just fit up under there. Well, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. So you can get a slimline chassis to fit up, up under there, but you have to take a grinder to the inside of the body, and you actually have to grind the uh, slimline chassis on both sides to get it up under there. You can do it to get it fit properly. It's a pain in the rear, guys. It's a pain in the rear. So what I did is I got a uh, Tyco Pro motorcycle, and I gutted it. I gutted it. And this is what it looks like underneath. You can see the Tyco Pro, the, the uh, motor there, and the, uh, the uh, I guess, um, transmission. <laughs> transmission there. And I had to use the braided wires and everything like that. But uh, he, he said, you know, where did you get it? Well, one, it was Johnny Lightning. But then two, I had to make everything underneath there. You know, I had to do it. And I even got uh, Grandpa Munster in there. He's painted up green and uh, he's got his arms folded just like he should. So I love that thing. It, it is absolutely wonderful, wonderful. And at the same time, at the same time, they came out with the uh, Munster coach as well. You know, you can't have the Dragula without having the Munster coach. You know what? You really can't. And it's on a, a slimline chassis, and boy, it runs very, very good. I've got four neodymium magnets on the side of there, and it just runs. It runs so, so, so well. It really does. No looking piece. So anyways, uh, my viewer said, hey, you know, where'd I get it? I made the darn thing. Johnny Lightning, Johnny Lightning. And um, as far as I know, and no one's contested this, I was the first guy to get them both done. There's been a number of people say, oh, I, you know, I do a lot of, yeah, fine. Uh, I think they took it from my lead there. But if you do one, you kind of got to have the other. You know what? All right, got the cover back. And I believe this is done as far as drying. Let's go ahead and get it hooked up and get it around the track, guys. There we go, make sure the guide pen, yep, it's in. Let's give it some juice. Yeah, there you go. We already know it looks good around the track, now it looks good sitting still too. Okay, what else do we have left? We've got to do the red highlights real quick. I gotta find my uh, red tester uh, paint marker, but man, look at that. Easy to put together, easy to paint up so far, so we're doing great. All right, here's the red tester I just got done using. You see how flat that tip is? I was making reference to that the, uh, earlier. That little um, side light there, I just use a flat tip, but anywhere where it's round like that, where you want a round circle, what I do is I have got this uh, dowel here and I dip it into the, the, the paint a little bit. And then when I put it on the lights or anything, it'll, it'll make a good circle or a good dot. It's an easy way to make a round um, like the tail lights, if you need it. Looking good. Now we got it painted up. It is definitely track time. Definitely track time, guys. Okay, good. Should be all set. Let's see what we get. Oh, we got another fun project done. Look at that. Look at that. Now I can really understand if guys are racing these. You know, I run my slot cars, but I can understand if guys are going to be racing these. It's going to be a blast. And, and, and if you do get a camper from these guys and you want to modify it or anything, again, show me some pictures, guys. I'd love to see what you, you're doing. And I'm thinking about the next one, maybe a diorama in it, but at least a light, at least a light, and get it all painted up. All right, I'm, I'm hyped about this. So you got to thank the uh, print pro guys. You really do. Uh, they come through with this stuff. 
And uh, if you get a chance to get one of their trailers, nab it. Just grab it. I can't say enough good about it. I was earlier, I was putting cars on there just to see which one looks best. I couldn't figure out. They all look good. They all look good. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Give me a like if you haven't. Subscribe already, please do. And my book. Guys, I can't thank you enough for uh, uh, buying my book. It's all about the Thunder ch chassis there. And um, it was one of my passions doing it. I'm glad you guys are getting it and really enjoying it. All right, guys, let me know if you need anything. I sincerely mean it. See ya.